there. Know that we are divided in free our kingdom, and tis our fast intent to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on younger strengths, while we unburdened crawl towards death. Tell me, my daughters, which of you shall we say doth love us most? That we our largest bounty may extend, where nature doth with merit challenge. Goneril, our eldest born, speak first. Sir, I love you more than words can wield the matter. As much a child e'er loved or father found, a love that makes breath poor and speech unable, beyond all manner of so much, I love you. What shall Cordelia do? Love, and be silent. Of all these bounds, even from this line to this, we name thee lady. To thine and Albany's issue be this perpetual. What says our second daughter, our dearest Regan, wife to Cornwall? Speak. Sir, I am made of the self-same metal that my sister is, and prize me at the word for in my true heart. I find she names my very deed of love. Only, I find she comes too short, but I profess myself an enemy to all other joys save your dear highness's love. Then tell Cordelia. To thee and mine, hereditary ever remain this ample third of our fair kingdom, no less than that conferred on Goneril. Now, our joy, although last, not least, speak. Nothing, my lord. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing will come of nothing. Speak again. <laughs> I love your majesty according to my bond, no more nor less. How, how Cordelia mend your speech a little, lest it may mar your fortunes. Good, my lord, you have begot me, bred me, loved me. I return those to these back as are right fit. Obey you, love you, and most honor you. Why am my sister's husband if they say they love you all? Surely I shall never marry like my sisters to love my father all. But goes thy heart in this? I, good my lord. So young and so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Let it be so, thy truth then be thy dower. For by the sacred radiance of the sun, here I disclaim all thy paternal care. And as a stranger to my heart and me, hold thee from this forever. Good my lord. Peace, Kent, come not between a dragon and his wrath. I loved her most, and thought to set my rest on her kind nursery. Hence, and avoid my sight! With my two daughters dower I just this third. Let pride, which she calls plainness, marry her. Beloved sons, be yours, this cornet part betwixt me. Royal dear, whom I have ever loved, as my father honored, as my king, as my master followed. The bow is bent and drawn, mate from the shaft. Let it fall rather, though the fork invade the region of my heart. What wilt thou do, old man? Thinkest thou that to me shall have bread to speak, when power to flattery bows? Catch on thy life no more! My life I never held but as a pawn to wage against thy enemies, nor fear to lose it, thy safety being the motive. Out of my sight. Hear me, recreant, on thy allegiance, hear me. Five days we do allot thee for provision, and on the sixth to turn thy hated back on our kingdom. If on the tenth day following thy banished trunk be found in our dominions, the moment is thy death. Fare thee well, king, since thus thou wilt appear. Freedom lives hence, and banishment is here. The gods to their dear shelter take thee made, that justly thinks and has most rightly said. And your large speeches may your deeds approve, that good effects may spring from words of love. It is most strange that she, that even but now is your best object, the argument of your praise, born of your age, most best, most dearest, should in this choice of time commit a thing so monstrous to dismantle so many faults of favor. And yet the Teach your majesty, before I want that glittered oily art, to speak and flatter though not to have it, have lost me in your liking. 
Better thou hadst not been born than to not have pleased me better. Fairest Cordelia, thee and thy virtues here I seize upon. Thy dower and hostile king, thrown to my chance, shall be queen of ours, of us, of our fair France. Thou hast her friends. Let her be thine, for we have no such daughter. Therefore be gone. Pardoned you in good terms, found you no displeasure by word or countenance? None at all. 
Bethink yourself wherein you may have offended him. Some villain hath done me wrong. That's my fear. I pray you, retire with me to my lodging, from whence I will fitly bring you to hear my lord speak. Pray ye, go. There's my key. And if you do stir abroad, go armed. Armed, brother. Brother, I advise you to the best. Go armed. Shall I hear from you or not? I do serve you in this business. <laughs>
tie boy between a bitch and cool and sneakful. No, lad, teach me. That lord that counsel thee to give away thy land. Come place it here by me. Do thou, born in sand, the sweet and bitter fool will presently appear. The one in motley here, the other found up there. Dost thou call me fool, boy? All thy other titles thou hast given away that thou wast born. This is not altogether fool, my lord. Fools and there this with me here, for wise men have grown foolish. They know not how their wits to wear, their manners are so apish. <laughs> when were you wont to be so full of songs, sirrah? Why, ever since thou waited thy daughters thy mothers? When thou meanest to them around, it could stand mine own breaches. <laughs> Master that can teach thy fool to lie. I would fain learn to lie. And you lie, sir, I will have you whipped. I marvel what kin thou and thy daughters are. They'll have me whipped for speaking truth. I'll have you whipped for lying. Sometimes I whipped for just holding my peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be any kind of thing, my fool. And yet, I will not be a queen, my uncle. Why, how now, daughter? We teach you too much in the crown. Thou wast a pretty fellow, and thou hadst no need to care for her frowning. Yes, first you to hold my tongue, so your face fits me, though you say nothing. Mom, mom. <laughs> Not only, sir, that you're all licensed fool, but the other of your insolent retinue do hourly carp and quarrel, breaking more than rank and not to be endured riots. Sir, I had thought by making this well known unto you to have found a safe address, but now grow fearful by what yourself too late hath spoke and done. Are you our daughter? Doth any here know me? This is not Lear. Doth Lear walk thus? He thus wear his eyes. Who is it that can tell me who I am? Lear's shadow. I should learn that. For by lines of sovereignty, knowledge, and reason, I should be false persuaded I had a daughter. This admiration, sir, is much of the favor of other your new pricks. I do beseech you to understand my purposes aright. As you are old and reverend, you should be wise. Here do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so debauched and bold, that this our court, in fact, with the madness, shows like a riot sin. And Peterism and the lust make it more like a tavern or a brothel than a grace palace. Be then desired by me that I should take the thing I beg. A little to disquantity your trade. Darkness and devils! Sell my horses, call my train together. Degenerate bastard! I'll no longer trouble thee, yet have I left a daughter. You spread my people, and don't just order rabble and make servants of their betters. Oh, sir, you come. Is this your will? Speech, sir. Pray, sir, be patient. Oh, detested kite, thou liest. My men are of choice and rarest parts that all particulars of duty know. Oh, Lear, 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 go. Go, my people. My lord, I am guiltless as I am ignorant of what hath moved you. It may be so, my lord. Hear, nature, hear! Dear goddess, hear! Suspend thy purpose if thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful. Into her womb convey sterility. If she must teem, create her child a spleen so that it may live, and that she may feel how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. Away! Away! Now, God, that we adore, whereof comes this? Never afflict yourself to know the cause. What? Fifty of my men in the class within a fortnight! What's the matter, sir? I'll tell thee. Life and death! I am ashamed that thou hast power to shake my manhood thus blast! and falls upon thee. Comes it to this, so be it. Yet I have left a daughter.
Do you mark that, my lord? I cannot be so partial, Goneril, to the great love I bear you. Pray you content. But awful how this man hath had the counsel a hundred knights to hold their lives in mercy. Oswald, I say! You may fear too far, save and then trust to fly. How now, Oswald? What have you written that letter to my sister? Yes, madam. Take you some company and away to horse. Inform her full of my particular fear. Send you these, to Gloucester with these letters. If your diligence be not speedy, I shall be there for you. I will not sleep, my lord, till I have delivered your letters. Canst thou tell why what one's nose stands in the middle of one's face? No. Why keep up one's eyes, neither side's nose? I did her wrong. Canst thou tell why a snail has a house? Why? Why to keep his head in, not to even awake his daughters and leave his horns without a face? The reason why is seven stars are no more than seven. Because they are not eight? Yes. How would it make a good fool? I would not be mad. Not mad. Oh, heavens, give me patience. I would not be mad. Come, fool. The Duke be here tonight, the better. Best this weaves itself purpose into my plan. Brother, a word to send. Brother, I say. Oh, sir, fly this place. Intelligence is given where you are hid. Have you not spoken against the Duke of Cornwall? He's coming hither, and Regan with him. I hear our father coming. Pardon me, in cunning, I must draw my sword against you. Fly, brother. Torches, torches. So farewell. Come on, young master. Get out! Get out! Get out! 
your valor. What is your difference? Speak! This ancient ruffian, my lord, that I have stared at to the great year. Thou whoreson said, thou unnecessary letter. Peace, Sirrah! Beastly name, know you no reference. <laughs> a plague upon your epileptic visage. Smiling my speech as though I were a fool. Why, art thou mad, old man? How fill you out? Say that. No contrary sold more antipathy than I am such a knave. Why dost thou call him a knave? What is his offense? His countenance likes me not. Nor more perchance does mine, nor his, nor hers. Sir, tis my occupation to be plain. I have seen better faces in my time. Oh, this is some fellow, whether good praise for bluntness, doth affect a saucy roughness. He cannot flatter. He. He must speak truth, and so, if not, he's plain. Sir, in good sooth, in sincere verity, under the allowance of your great aspect, whose influence like a wreath of radiant fire on flickering Phoebus front. What meanest by this? To go out of my dialect, would you discommend so much? Thou forth the stocks, you stubborn ancient knave! You reverend brother, we'll teach you! Sir, I am too old to learn. Call not your socks for me, I serve the king. That's what the socks! I have life and honor, there he shall sit till noon. Till noon, till night, my lord, and all night too. Why, madam, if I were your father's dog, you should not use me so. Sir, being his knave, I will. This is a fellow of self or our sister's Let me beseech your grace not to do so. His fault is much, and the good king, his master, will check him for it. I am sorry for thee, friend. I'll entreat for thee. Pray, do not. I have watched and traveled hard. Sometime I shall sleep out, and the rest I'll whistle. A good man's fortune may grow out of heels. Give you good morrow. The Duke's to blame in this. Twill be ill taken. Approach, thou beacon, to this underglow, that by thy comfortable beams I may peruse this letter. Nothing almost sees miracles but misery. I notice from Cordelia, who hath most fortunately been informed of my obscured state, and shall find time from this enormous state, seeking to give losses their remedies. Oh, fortune, good night. Smile once more, turn thy wheel. I heard myself proclaimed, and by the happy hollow of a tree I saved to hunt. No port is safe, no place does not attend my taking. Whilst I may escape, I will preserve myself, and am thought to take the basest and most poorest shape in ever penury and contempt of man brought here to beast. My face all is grime with filth, blanket my loins, elf all my hair in knots, and with presented nakedness, I'll face all the wings and persecutions of the sky. Country hath given me proof and precedent of bedlam beggars. Port earlier! Port up! <coughs> There's something yet. Edgar, I nothing am. Tis strange that they should so depart from home. Hail to thee, noble master. <laughs> Hast thou made to this shame thy pastime? No, sir. <laughs> He wears rural garments. When a man's are lusty at legs, then he wears wooden stockings. <laughs> what is he that has so much like place mistook to send me here? It is both he and she, your son and daughter. No. Yes. No, I say. I say yay. No, no, they would not. Yes, they have. By Jupiter, I swear no. By Juno, I swear I. They dares not do it. They could not, would not do it. Uh, winter's not gone yet if the wild geese fly. Where is this daughter? With the earl, sir, here with him. Follow me not. Stay here. How chance the king come with so small a train? And thou hadst been set in the stocks for that question, thou wouldst have well deserved it. Why, fool? All that follow their noses are led by their eyes, but blind men. There's not a single nose among twenty that can smell them. That's stink. Where learned you this, fool? Not in the stocks. <coughs> Did not I speak with me? They are sick, they are weary, they have traveled all the night. Fetch me a better answer. My dear lord, you know the fiery quality of the duke. Vengeance, plague, death, confusion, fiery. What quality? My Gloucester, Gloucester, I'll speak to the Duke of Cornwall and 
his wife. Well, my good lord, I informed them so. Informed them? Dost thou understand me, man? I, my good lord. Tell the duke and his wife to come here. Bid them forth and hear me. Or at their chamber door, I'll beat the drum to the Christ slave to death. I would have all well be towards you.
being the worst stands in some rank praise. I'll go with thee. Thy fifth yet, double five and twenty, and thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord. What need you five and twenty? Ten or five? What need you one? Oh, reason, not the need. Thou art a lady, if only warm or gorgeous. Why, nature needs not what thou wert worst, which scarcely keeps you warm. You heavens, give me patience. Patience I need. You see me here, a poor old man, full of grief. Touch me with noble anger, and not like women's weapons. Water drops stain my man's cheeks. No, you unnatural hags. I will have such revenges on you both that all the world shall. I shall do such things, what they are, yet I know not. But they shall be the terrors of the earth. You think I'll weep? No, I'll not weep. I have full cause of weeping. This heart shall break to a hundred thousand quads or arrow a week. Oh, fool! I shall go mad. What is this for this storm? Alack, the night comes. Enter here. 
I here take my oath before this honorable assembly. She kicked the poor king, her father. Come hither, mistress. Is your name Goneril? She cannot deny it. Cry mercy. I took you for a joint school. <laughs> Where's the king? My lord of Gloucester hath command him hence. Some five or six and thirty of his men are gone with him to Dover, and they boast well armed friends. Seek out the villain Gloucester, pinion him like a thief. Hang him instantly. Edmund, Edmund, keep you our sister company. The revenges we are bound to take upon your traitorous father are not for fear beholden. Farewell, my dear sister. Farewell, my lord of Gloucester. Farewell, sweet lord. Get horses and for sister. get horses for your mistress. Edmund, farewell. The traitor. Ingrateful fox, tis he. Fine, fast and corky arms. What mean your graces? Good, my friends, consider you are my guest. Find him, I say. Hard heart, oh filthy traitor. Ah! As merciful lady as you are, I am none. So poor oh, and such a traitor. To this chair, find him, villain, thou shalt find! Ah! <laughs> By the kind gods, tis most nobly done. Come, sir, what letters had you late from France? Be civil answer, for we know the truth. And what confederates he had with the traitors? Whose hands have you sent the lunatic king? I have, a lesser, I have a letter guessingly set down, which came from one of neutral heart and not from one opposed. Cunning. And false! Where hast thou sent the king? To Dover. Wherefore, to Dover, sir, was thou not short of that? Wherefore, to Dover, let him run to that! I am tied to the stake and must stand the course. Wherefore, to Dover, sir! Because I will ah! see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes. Thy shall cease the winged vengeance to overtake such children. See if thou shalt never. Fellows, hold the chair. Upon these eyes of mine!
effortless. Where's my son Edmund? Edmund! And kindle all the sparks of nature to quit this horrid ass. Oh, treasures good, have polished on him that hates thee. He was he that named the overture on thy treason to us. Oh, my colleagues! Then Edgar was abused. Thrust him out of the gates and let him smell his way to Dover. I have received a herd. Turn out that eyeless villain. Free him. I bleed a pace. Give me your arm. Lord Edmund spake not with your lord at home? 
No, madam. What might import my sister's letter to him? I know not, lady. Why should she write to Edmund? Let me unseal the letter. Lady, I had rather... I know my sister does not love her husband, that I am sure of. I know you are of her bosom. I, lady? I speak in understanding. You are? I know it. Therefore, I advise you, take this note. My lord is dead, Edmund and I have talked, and more convenient is he for my hand than that of your lady. So fare you well. When will he come to the top of that same hill? We do climb up it now. He thinks the ground is even. Horrible steep. Hark, do you hear the sea? No, truly. Come here, sir. Here's the place. Stand still. How fearful and dizzy it is to cast one's eyes so low. The fishermen that walk upon the beach appear like mice. I'll look no more. Set me where you stand. Give me thy hand. You are now within a foot of the extreme verge. Like oh, like oh my hands. Go, go thou farther off. Bid me farewell. Now, fare thee well, Lord. With all my hearts. Why I do trifle thus with his despair is done to cure it. Oh, you mighty gods! This world I do renounce, if Edgar live, ah, oh, bless him. Now, fellow, fare thee well. Gone, sir. Farewell. Oh, you yes, sir. Friend! Oh, you yes, sir. Speak! Yet your voice! Speak, so. Oh, wait and let me die. Which is the thief? Get thee glass eyes like a skirt. 
every politician seems to see things that does not. No. No. No, no. I know thee well enough. My name is Gloucester. Thou must be patient. We came crying hither. Alack, alack the day. When we are born, we cry when we came to this great stage of fools. Curious. Your most dear daughter. No rescue. What? Prisoner? Use me well. You shall have ransom. Let me have surgeons. I am passed to the brains. Oh, you shall have anything. I will die bravely. Come, I am a king. You are a royal one, and we obey you. Then there's life in it. Nay, if you get it, you shall get it with running. Thank you, sir. Farewell. You ever gentle gods, take my breath from me. Let not my worst of spirit tempt me to die for you, please. Well, pray you, Father. Let us leave you to some fighting. Hard to thanks. No, the 
the Duke of this last purpose whole. My dear sweet lord, you know the goodness I intend upon you. Tell me about truly. Do you not love my sister? In honor of love. <laughs> but have you ever found my brother's way to the poor, bended place? That thought abuses you. I will not endure her. <laughs> Dear my lord. I would rather lose the battle than that sister should loosen him and me. Our very loving sister well be met. Sir, this I hear, the king comes to his daughter. This business toucheth us as France invades our land. Combined together against the enemy. For these domestic and particular broils are not the question here. Let's then determine with the ancient of war on our proceedings. I shall attend you presently at your tent. Sister, you will go with us? No. Tis most convenient, I pray you. Go with us. Oh, I know the rest. If any man of quality or degree within the list 
Chiefs of the Army will maintain upon Edmund, supposed Earl of Gloucester, that he is a manifold traitor. Let him appear. Ask him his purposes. What are you, your name, your quality? No, my name is lost by treason's tooth. In my noble and blood is he I come to cope. Which is that adversary? What is he that speaks for Edmund, Earl of Gloucester? Himself. What sayest thou to him? Thou art a traitor, false to thy gods, thy brother, and thy father. Say thou no, thou liest. Back do I toss these treasons to my head. This sword of mine shall give them instant way where they shall rest forever.
Thank you so very much for coming. Thank you. 